Good morning everyone, I am Tim Dube. And if you notice my face, you can easily see that I am smiling. Rather, I should say that I am trying to control the crack of my laughter. You know why? What is the reason behind this smile? Rather, I should say mysterious smile. I am smiling thinking about you. I know it very well that as soon as you look on the screen and read the title of this story, The Enemy, I am very much sure you will strike your head. This story, The Enemy, the story that makes you feel sleepy, the story that never seems to be coming to an end, this story, the story which was when being explained by your teacher, you were yawning and praying when it will come to an end and despite your repeated prayers, it wasn't coming to an end and it was going on and on and on and on. But there is a proverb and the proverb is beggars can't be choosers. So you cannot choose and because you cannot avoid it, you cannot do away with it, you cannot get rid of it. So the best solution is to enjoy it. Okay, jokes apart. Now, before I begin the explanation of this particular story in today's class, I would like to tell you how this particular story has been organized under what headings. So first of all, we will be discussing this title for some time as usual. And after that, you can see the next heading that is given about the author, followed by, because it's this story's background is historical background. It has been written in uh, against the backdrop of the Second World War. So we will see the backdrop of this story also, followed by a very precise, or you can say brief central idea. But after that, the long journey of explanation of the entire story will begin. At the end of the story, after the end of the explanation, I will give you the summary, but I would give you some suggestions. And the first suggestion is, do not watch this video in one go. As much as you feel study line, like you watch it, you study that much only. Once you feel that it is, you know, it, it is acting on your or getting on your nerve, then you stop it and you begin it from the next day. So this is how you can keep the entire content with you. And of course, because if you have to appear for the board exam and if you want to score good marks, so whether you like it or not, but you will have to study. So the best solution is to enjoy it. And I assure you, you will enjoy. You will enjoy. And when you begin enjoying, when you listen it, when you try to take active participation in the activities that is going on in this lecture or even in your class also. But because it is a recorded lecture, it is a YouTube video, so you can enjoy it, you can watch it whenever and at whatever space you want to. So let's begin with uh, discussion of the title, The Enemy. I think you must have read it earlier also or uh, you must have heard about it and if you haven't then let me tell you what it is all about. Now let us discuss the significance of the title first. The enemy. If I ask you a simple question, whom do you call your enemy? Think over it and uh, then come up with one answer. Okay, now let us discuss what you have thought. So would you like to call a person who intends to act against you your enemy? Of course. A person who wants to harm you. A person wants a person who wants to kill you. Will you call that person your enemy? Of course. Now let us take this word at national level. One country becomes enemy of another country. Let us talk about the two countries. 
Russia and Ukraine, the two countries that are on war at present. So, would you like to say that Russia is an enemy country for Ukraine and Ukraine is an enemy country for Russia? Of course. So, the present story, the enemy is talking about such two countries, United States of America and Japan, which were engaged in war with each other in the Second World War. So, the present title refers to that context. Hope you must have understood the meaning of this title, The Enemy. Now, let us talk about the author, Pearl S. Buck. Now, look at the first paragraph and get some idea who Pearl S. Buck was because it will give you a kind of understanding about the author and when you understand something about the writer or the author, it becomes easier for you to understand the work prescribed by your board written by that particular author. Now, look at the screen and let us read this part written about the author, though I think you do not need any assistance or help from me in understanding this introduction about the author. But however, if I go on explaining from time to time, things will become easier for you. So let us see the first paragraph, read it carefully. Pearl S. Buck was highly acclaimed American author, acclaimed means renowned, known for her profound literary contributions. You should keep this mind, this phrase in mind, profound literary contributions means significant literary contribution and her deep insights into the complexities of human nature. This phrase means that she has deep understanding of the complex human nature, means our nature, people's nature is actually complex. It's very difficult to understand people's nature. And she has also deep understanding of cultural diversity. If you read more about her, you will find that she has spent a greater part of her life in China and she was an American author. She has also been to Japan. So she has greater understanding of different cultures, diverse cultures. So this line is talking about that part of Buck. Now look at the next line. I don't think it's uh, difficult for you to understand. Better you look at the last part of this paragraph. So, Buck's remarkable career as a writer spanned several decades and she remains one of the most significant and influence, uh, influential American novelists of the 20th century. I do not think it's uh, difficult for you to understand. So, I am not giving you unnecessary explanation. Now, look at the next part. Some of her Pearl S. Buck is best known for her literary works that often explore the lives and experiences of both Chinese and American individuals in China. So, as I was talking about this part that she had spent a great amount of her life in China. Her parents were missionaries. Missionaries are such people who, uh, you know, propagate, who spread their religion. So, her parents were actually missionaries and they were uh, spreading uh, Christianity in China. In that context, she spent her time in China and understood Chinese culture, where she spent a significant part of her life. Her most famous work is a novel, The Good Earth. So, you can keep it for good knowledge and it was published in the year 1931. Also, you can see the prize that she won, the Pulitzer Prize for her for fiction and propelled her to international fame. So, this particular work, The Good Earth, actually catapulted her into a very famous author. So, this paragraph is talking about her work and how she became famous. Now, look at the last two paragraphs. Throughout her prolific career, Buck wrote numerous novels, short stories, essays, non-fiction works, many of which touched on themes such as cultural understanding. I have been talking about this part. 
So most of our works talk about cultural understanding, social justice and the human capacity for both good and evil. This part is very very important. She was also an advocate for women's rights and racial equality. When we were talking about uh, Aunt Jennifer's Tigers, if you remember, Aunt Jennifer's Tigers, Adriani Rich. So Adriani Rich was also a great supporter, advocate of human rights, women's, ra women's rights. Likewise, Buck was also a great supporter, an advocate of women's rights and racial equality. So these discussion will give you in-depth understanding about the author. Now, finally, in recognition of literary achievements, Pearl S. Buck was rewarded. So you should keep this also in mind. It will help you have some in-depth understanding about the author. So she was awarded with the Nobel Prize in Literature in the year 1938. Hope this discussion must have helped you understand Pearl S. Buck, Buck a little. And then when you begin the discussion of the story, it helps you a lot. So now let us move on to the background of this particular story, the enemy. Against what background or backdrop this story has been written. Hope it is not boring and uh, you are not feeling sleepy because you have to continue a long journey. So you should not lose heart and as I have already told you, if you feel that you are feeling sleepy or you are feeling boring, you can leave it for some time and then you can begin this lecture the next day. Okay, so let us begin it uh, next. Now look at the screen and let us begin developing the understanding of this particular story. And if you read this particular part, background of the story, you can start predicting, you will start guessing what is going to come next. And in this way, you can easily develop a very clear concept, very clear understanding of the entire story. And as I have promised, I will not give long, boring lecture, rather I will talk to you so that you can feel it easier and keep your interest maintained in this story. So let us read it together and try to understand the background of this story, the enemy. So as you can see, written in the first paragraph, this story has been set during the Second World War. I think you must be knowing when Second World War began. The Second World War started in the year 1939. And uh, when it began, the second line is talking about during this time, there was significant tension and conflict between the United States and Japan. This line, you have to keep it in mind. It will help you in understanding the opening part of the story and then as it moves ahead, you can keep it as your background of the knowledge. So during this period, that means during the Second World War, there was great tension, significant tension, conflict between America and Japan. Then in the year 1941, uh, next line talks about the attack on Pearl Harbor by the Japanese in the year 1941 had intensified hostilities between the two nations, leading to a deep-seated animosity. Then when the World War II began in the year 1939, one blunder, what should I say blunder? that is up to historian to decide. So a big mistake we can say was committed by Japan. American Harbor, Pearl Harbor was attacked by Japan and this Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor intensified the hostilities, the enmity between the two nations, America and Japan. And this created, this led to a deep-seated animosity, hatred against each other. Now, the next paragraph, the second. So, 
I am talking about this only. So you can you have to keep it in mind that Pearl Harbor has been attacked by Japan and America has turned against Japan and there is heightened hostilities. Means both the countries are being for their blood. America wants to kill Japanese and Japanese want to kill Americans. This is the same situation. So against this backdrop, the story unfolds with an American soldier. So when the story begins, you will find that when there is heightened tension, there is great animosity, there is hostilities between the two nations. Under these circumstances, an American soldier is washed ashore at a Japanese doctor's door. Now, if you happen to be that doctor, what would you do? Think about it. Then, look at this last paragraph. So, the tension in the story arises from the conflict between the doctor's duty to his country and his duty as a healer to save a wounded man in need. This line is very, very important. You must underline it and you must write it in your exam's answer. This is the keyword. If you remember it, it can be fit in any answer. Means most of the answer I can say. So this line must be kept in mind. So the tension in the story arises from the conflict between the doctor's duty to his duty. So when an American soldier is washed ashore at a Japanese doctor's door, then he is in two minds. Whether he should treat that wounded man or he should leave him to die. This is that doctor Sadao's dilemma. And then, next line, Pearl S. Buck uses this backdrop of wartime hostility and the clash of national loyalties to explore themes of humanity, compassion and the complexity of moral choices during times of conflict. So there is a messaging by the author Paul S. Buck that this is a testing time for both the countries whether it is Americans or whether it is Japanese. Humanity should not be for, for, uh, forgotten. People must remain compassionate to each other. Even under such circumstances when the tension is at its peak. So this entire paragraph is very, very important for any student. Now I am taking you to the central idea. Right. After understanding this particular piece, it will be easy for you to understand this simple theme simple thing this is in front of you you just have a look you see this screen is dancing now the central idea of the story the enemy by Pearl S. Buck is the moral and ethical dilemma what do you mean by the word dilemma dilemma means the state of being in two minds when you are in a state of confusion that is called dilemma so here she creates a dilemma, moral dilemma, ethical dilemma faced by Dr. Sadao. What he should do? Dr. Sadao, we will come to know in the story, is a Japanese physician during the World War II. And Dr. Sadao, of his central conflict revolves around the question. This is very, very important. So his question, this question is whether to treat and help an injured American soldier to washes, not washes, who is washed, washed ashore near his home or to adhere his loyalty to Japan and leave the soldier to die. So this is the central dilemma, conflict or you can say internal conflict in the mind of Dr. Sadao. The story explores themes of compassion, the universal bonds of humanity and the complexity of moral choices during times of war. It challenges the notion of the enemy by highlighting the shared humanity that transcends 
nationalities and conflicts so what it means in simple language is that under such time people's morality moral values are tested what they should do under such circumstances so it uh, highlights the shared humanity that under the circumstances humanity should not be forgot, forgot, you know, forgotten and humanity should transcend that means cross all nationalities or conflicts ultimately suggesting that acts of kindness and compassion can bridge the divide between individuals on opposing sides of a war so if there are two nations on war and uh, people of those nations maintain kindness generosity big heartedness large heartedness these acts of kindness acts of compassion actually bridge the gap between the two nations or two individuals so this is the central message now after i believe that we must have understood what the central theme or central idea of this particular chapter is and from here onward we will begin explanation of this story line by line right so again i would uh, i would suggest you to do the same thing if you feel it is acting on your nerve stop it study it in the next class so now here is the story in front of you in full detail but before i begin reading and explaining it scene by scene line by line i would like to take your mind to the previous discussion the backdrop and the central idea especially the backdrop do you remember the scene the time the circumstances the tension that was prevailing between america and japan during the second world war so if you keep that scene in mind it will become easier for you to maintain a track of the entire story so in that part of the discussion what we have seen that after japan attacked the pearl harbor tension between america and japan intensified each country bade for blood and you can understand it very well the kind of tension building the kind of enmity the kind of animosity the kind of feeling that Jap japanese thinking that americans are my enemies and americans thinking that japanese are my enemies let us kill them let us eliminate them from this face of the earth and it so happened if you remember japan was attacked by america with nuclear bomb so that was the amount of hatred in minds and uh, minds of people as well as the authorities so this is the kind of scene that you have to keep it in mind when beginning reading and explanation of this story now to make your reading more interesting and easy to understand i have divided into 20 smaller chunks or you can say scenes each scene will help you understand and develop your concept slowly and gradually and at the end of the story when you make a collection of all these points the entire story will be in your mind and you can easily present it so look at the first heading and read it carefully what is the first heading suggesting or telling you have a look the enemy understanding the story line by line and the opening paragraph talks about dr sadao hoki's house and its location because the story has to be you know set so the story begins with the description of dr sadao's hoki's house where is it located you read and uh, understand it very easy meanwhile after some time i begin explanation so what you find you read it dr sadao hoki's house was built on a spot of the japanese coast where as a little boy 
he had often played. The low, square stone house was set upon rocks well above a narrow beach that was outlined with pine with bent pines. As a boy, Sadao had climbed the pines, supporting himself on his bare feet, as he had seen men do in the South Seas when they climbed for coconuts. His father had taken him often to the islands of the seas, and never had he failed to say to the little brave boy at his side, Those islands yonder, they are the stepping stones to the future for Japan. And Dr. Sadao would ask, Where shall we step from them? Sadao had asked seriously. His father would say, Who knows? Who can limit our future? It depends on what we make it. What does it mean? What is the meaning of these dialogues or what is the significance of Dr. Sadao Hoki's father's sentences? But before that, let us understand this paragraph because this is the opening paragraph and you must have clean understanding of the beginning part of the story. So if you have to analyze this paragraph, what will you say? As you can see, the first line of this paragraph is talking about location of Dr. Sadao Hoki's house which was built on a Japanese coast. And then the central character that uh, Dr. Sadao Hoki is introduced as a little boy. So as a little boy, he had often played. And where was his house located? The next line is telling you. The low square stone house was set upon, that means located, built on rocks well above a narrow beach. So here it is showing the location of his house only then the scene will move ahead. So his house was located on a narrow beach and that beach was surrounded with coconut trees, bent pines. And because his house was there, so on that beach as a little boy, Sadao had climbed the pines, that means those trees, you must have seen in, if you, even if you haven't seen, you can see it on YouTube or in several movies. People climbing, climbing coconut trees, supporting with their bare feet. So as a child, Dr. Sadao used to climb those coconut trees, supporting like men do. And then the second character who is being introduced in this character is Dr. Sadao Hopi's father. Sometimes questions come to give a character sketch of Dr. Sadao Hopi's father. So it is also very important to understand what kind of a person he was. And this dialogue is very, very important because it will continue into the next paragraph. Those islands yonder, those islands yonder means there were islands away from that beach. And his father would point at the, those islands. And he called them stepping stones to the future for Japan. What does it mean? The meaning of this uh, dialogue is this. Dr. Sadao's father likely meant that these islands could play a significant role in Japan's expansion and prosperity. They could serve as basis for trade, resources, military influence, helping Japanese advance and secure its position in the world. So this is the first paragraph. Now, we are moving on to the second paragraph. So, you keep it in mind that in the first paragraph, Dr. Sadao Hoki is introduced as a little boy. So, as the story moves ahead, time will move ahead, time will advance, and as time advances, there will be change in the character. This is called character development. So, let us see how Dr. Sadao Hoki's character is developed in the second. This part. So what is the reasons why Dr. Sadao Hoki had not been sent abroad with troops? What does it mean? Again, remember the backdrop. America and Japan both are on wars. 
So American soldiers are coming out to Japan and Japanese are going to American side because they want to take revenge or attack. But Dr. Salao Hoki is not sent out of Japan. What was the reason? And this question can come in your exam. Reason was you can get answer to this question. Now look at the heading of this part that I have written and try to connect it with the previous part. Then you can easily understand the thread of the story as a story moving ahead, scene by scene, and that also without taking much time. So let me take your mind to the previous part of this story. So in the previous part of the story, what we have seen that Dr. Sadao Hoki is introduced in the story as a child. And what can you see now? This child has become a doctor by now. So in this part of the story, you can see that the child has become a doctor. One, two. He is not being sent abroad with troops. What can be the reason? For Dr. Sadao Hoki not being sent out of Japan. Though Japan is on war with United States. So why was he kept back in his own country? This question is likely to be asked in your any examination. An answer to this question is the last three, four sentences beginning from because if you can see and about his father. We have seen his father's character. His father never joked with him. He was a serious kind of person. So his father's concern is also being explained in this part of the story. So this question is likely to be asked in your examination. And after this much analysis, I think you must have been tempted to read this paragraph. And if your interest is developed, my work is done. And I have told you that you will not feel bored at all. So I am not explaining it. You find answer to this question. And I am moving ahead to the next scene of this story. Now, talking about the actual scene. So let me take you here. What is happening over here? Now recall scene 1, scene 2. Now this is scene 3. What is happening over here in scene 3? So we have seen two characters so far. Three characters we can see. If you read the last part of the second presentation, second heading, you can see the old general also. Now, what new character is being introduced in this part of the story? And what is this heading that I have written? And I have told you, you will enjoy. So Dr. Sadao watches fog outlining the little island, creeping up the beach, pines and even his house. Hana joins him. Dr. Sadao recollects how he had met Hana in America. Now, what is being described here? Weather. Weather. Sadao Hoki is watching fog, foggy weather. For me, there is fog on the island and this fog is spreading on the beach and that fog is engulfing the entire beach and then pine trees and then entire locality around the beach and Dr. Sadao Hoki is sitting in the veranda of his house which is facing the beach. So sitting in the veranda he is watching the fog engulfing or encircling the beach. So this is the setting. Setting and then a new character is introduced, his wife, Hana. Right. So I read the first paragraph, then the last part of it and the middle part will talk about his 
he is anhana's meeting you can understand it so let me read the first paragraph this is the weather part clouds rising from the ocean now the unexpected warmth of the past few days had at night drawn heavy fog from the cold ribs sakal watched mists mist fall hide outlines of a little island near the shore and then come creeping up the beach below the house ringing around the pines in a few minutes fog would be wrapped about the house too then he would go into the ha then he would go into the room where hana his wife would be waiting for him with the two children so from this paragraph what we come to see is clouds are uh, have gathered rising over the ocean and uh, for the last few days the weather has been warm and fog has engulfed that beach and dr sadao hoki sitting in this veranda part is not mentioned here he will come to know in the later part of the story so he is sitting in the veranda of his house and watching the fog covering the beach and he is thinking about his wife and children and he is thinking that because it is cold also and foggy so he would be going in so while he thinks that he would be going in where his wife hana would be waiting for him at the same time his wife joins him in that veranda and then the next part of this story is talking about how he and his wife meet in america how hana came back to japan and how their marriage was performed in traditional japanese way so you read that part it is not uh, it's not very important for me but the last part is very important look at this part this part because from here you can understand the connection now he felt her now she has joined and now this is continuation i am reading from this part so now he felt her hand on his arm and was aware of the pleasure it gave him even though they had been married years enough to have the two children for they hadn't married heedlessly in america they had finished their work at school and had come home to japan and when his father had seen the marriage when her father had seen her the marriage had been arranged in the old japanese way all the sadao and hana had talked everything over beforehand they were perfectly happy she laid her cheek against his arm so you can make a mental picture that when his wife joins him she is placing her her cheeks on his uh shoulders lovingly tenderly and when she is placing or keeping her cheeks on his shoulders then her eyes fall on the beach and she sees something into the ocean what is that let us see hope you are understanding in a very easy manner now the fourth scene hmm? the fourth scene so you can make a mental picture that hana dr sadao hok his wife is placing her cheek on his shoulder and then her eyes are looking towards the beach and her eyes meet something something black in the beach can you must you can guess it what that black object could be so now the next character is being introduced in this story now let us look at the bold part now look at the bold part so that you can understand what is going to follow next dr sadao and hana see something black being flung up out of the ocean leaning over the railing of their veranda they see a man crawling then falling on his face and lying there so you can understand that both husband and wife are in the veranda and their eyes fall on something black in the ocean which is being thrown out so when we see that a man is being thrown out of the ocean 
they feel surprised and then they go to see who he is let me read out this part for you it was at this time that both of them saw something black come out of the mists it was a man it was flung up out of the ocean flung it seemed to his feet by a breaker he staggered a few steps his body outlined against the mist his arms above his head then the curled mist hit him again who's that hana cried she dropped sadao she dropped sadao's arm and they both leaned over the railing of the veranda now they saw him again the man was on his hands and knees crawling then they saw him fall on his face and lie there a fisherman perhaps sadao said washed from his boat he ran quickly down the steps and behind him hana came Hawaii sleeps flying a mile or two away on either side there were fishing villages but here was only the bare and lonely coast dangerous with rocks the surf beyond the beach was a spiked with rocks somehow the man had managed to come through them he must be badly torn dr sadao turns the face it is a white man his own dead blood coming from his wound so let us see this part the saw when they came toward him and that indeed it was the sand on side of him had already a stain of red and soaking through his own dead sadao exclaimed he made his haste to the man he made haste to the man who lay motionless his face in the sand an old cap stuck to his head soaked with sea water he was in wet rags of garments sadao stopped hana at his side and turned the man's head they saw the man they saw the face a white man hana whispered yes it was a white man the wet cap fell away and there he was his wet yellow hair long as though for many weeks it had not been cut and upon his young and tortured face was a rough yellow beard he was unconscious and knew nothing that the deed for him now so thou recommend now so thou remember the wound and his expert fingers and with his expert fingers he began to search for it blood flowed fresh at his touch On the right side of his lower back Sadao saw that a gun wound had been reopened the flesh was blackened with powder some time not many days ago the man had been shot and had not been tended it was bad chance many days ago the man had been shot and had not been tended so it had bad chance that the rock had struck the wound oh how his bleeding Hana whispered again in a solemn voice. The mist screened them now completely, and at this time of day, no one came by. The fishermen had gone home, and even the chance beachcombers would have considered the day at an end. So, from this last sentence, you can understand the timing of meeting of the Sadao couple and this American soldier, who is the enemy, the white man. so in this part of the story we have seen the enemy being introduced into the story now let us see what happens next now you look at this heading it is talking about dr sadao's dilemma so what is dr sadao's dilemma by now you have understood that so far as that american soldier is concerned he is an american soldier and america is on war with japan and an american soldier has been washed ashore at dr sadao's doorstep now you keep yourself in his position and think about your profession and your country 
what will you do under the circumstances let me put you in two different situations first of all you are a doctor and being a doctor your first religion your first duty your first responsibility is to save the life of a human being irrespective of his background or his nationality or his relation with you but if you do it if you uh, fulfill your professional obligation it will be equal to i am using a good word it will be tantamount to sedition that means acting against your own country you shouldn't forget that your country is on war with that country from where the soldier has been washed so what should you do under the circumstances what did dr sadao do and uh, again you have to be quite matured broad minded in thinking if you are saying that i will not treat the soldier because ultimately he is an enemy and it is also possible that if i treat that particular soldier tomorrow he he can it is possible it is quite possible that tomorrow he might turn against your own country in that case what will happen but at the same time you have to also think that it is also possible that if you treat him if you heal his wounds you are you are adhering to the principles of humanity because you are being true being loyal to your profession so this is dr sadao's dilemma in bold part i have already written dr sadao's dilemma should is should he leave the man back in the sea to die or must he carry him into the house to tend to his injuries i am not going to read this paragraph but this is very very important part of the story and you must read it carefully and one long answer type question is going to be asked from this part so this part of the story is going to show you that finally dr sadao and his wife carry this american soldier to their house dr sadao operates on him and uh, then this man starts recovering when he starts recovering from his wounds his injuries then another problem starts he has servants at his house so how can he convince servants and what is guarantee that these servants will not open their mouth to the police to the defense and will not talk against dr sadao so in next part of this story you will see that hope i am trying to help you understand and forcing your mind sometimes it so happens that if i am reading everything and explaining it will be some sort of spoon feeding in that case your mind will not take much but if you do things on your own and i develop interest in you that is much more important and it help you it will help you take interest in your subject so let us move ahead on the seventh part of this story now look at this part of the story and try to connect it with the previous scene in the previous scene we saw that so far as dr sadao was concerned he was in a dilemma his dilemma was whether he should leave the american soldier back in the sea to die or whether they should carry him into their house to treat him finally they decided to take this american soldier to their house and once they bring him into their house they find that he is dirty sand is stuck to his body and then his clothes are in dirt and rags so first of all he needs to be washed and then soon after that dr sadao understands the condition critical condition of the soldier 
and thinks it very well that if he is not operated on, it is possible that he may die. So in this part of the story, two things happen. That American soldier is washed and operation on him is performed by Dr. Sadao. Not very difficult. You just pause the video wherever you like to pause and uh, read it carefully. But I have given you the substance. Now, as I was talking about, servants are against Sadao's healing the white man's wound. Every individual has his or her own opinion. You cannot uh, force anyone to think as you are thinking. So here, so far as Dr. Sadao is concerned, he is a broad-minded person. He is a rich person and he has a lot of knowledge. So what he does, what he is doing, is fit in his eyes. But so far as the servants are concerned, they are not that highly educated. They are more loyal to their country. So the servant, you mean, and others are of the opinion that so far as their master, Dr. Sadao, is concerned. Since he has been in America, therefore, he is trying to save this American soldier. He is soft to him. That means the American soldier. And this thinking is not wrong. But this is what a man is made of. So you read this part because I have explained what is there inside and moving on to in this part of the story from under this heading you can see Hana has to wash the white man and he is operated on. So in one of the scenes we see that when Yumi the servant the maid's maid is asked to wash the white man. She denies. She says that she is a poor woman and she would not like to wash a white man. Well, this mistress, that means Hannah, tries to order her. She looks at her in such a manner that her stare sends a shiver down Hannah. So she understands that she cannot threaten her to do. She cannot force her to wash the white man. Because what if they open their mouth? What if they open the secret that this Sadao family is harboring or sheltering an American soldier? So she cannot pressurize her, she cannot put, uh, she cannot threaten her, she cannot coax her. So when she leaves the American soldier, then Hana herself has to wash and then the operation begins on him. And you have to learn how to think. When he is operated on, it's quite natural that he will be recovering from his wound and will be standing on his two feet. So in this part of the story, you will see these things. You pause the video wherever you like and you read it carefully. Then towards the end, I will tell you what questions are likely to be asked. This is a very long part. So you pause wherever you like. And here we are. So while Hana is washing and taking care of this American soldier, she observes deep scars on white man's neck, just under the ear, which suggests that he had been tortured. Mm, cannot say very important part of the story, you may skip it also, but if you read, it will be good for you. But I am speaking, uh, I am skipping. And let us move on to the 11th part.
So here we are. Finally, when operation is performed and this white man wakes, looks terrified to find where he is. Dr. Sadao talks to him. Now, you look at this heading and try to answer a question that I am asking you. This heading tells us, servants grow suspicious of Dr. Sadao's activities. Now the question is, why do servants grow suspicious of Dr. Sadao's activities? You can include the keywords in order to answer this particular question from the previous part. Or if you go back from the operation part till now, you can easily understand whether service suspicion of Dr. Sadao's activity was justified or not justified. Let us read this paragraph. Hana tells her husband, Sadao, Yumi tells me the servants feel they cannot stay if we hide this man here anymore. She said, she tells me that they are saying that you and I were so long in America that we have forgotten to think of our own country first. They think we like Americans. Now, this particular paragraph takes your mind to their life in America. So, servants think that this doctor couple, though Hana is not a doctor, this husband and wife are soft towards the American soldier because they have been in America, they have got education from there, so they have developed a kind of soft corner towards Americans who are at present their enemies. Answer this question. Are they justified in raising their suspicion against Dr. Sadao and his wife or not? And uh, when I ask you to answer this question, you try it. And whenever you are answering, try to include keywords in your answers so that you can develop a discussion habit, talking habit. Okay? And then you scroll down to different paragraphs and read it carefully what happens next. And now we are moving to the next part of this story. Finally, you can understand that if there is a tussle between the master and the servants, the servants can react in different manner because they cannot raise their voice against their master. They cannot raise their voice against Dr. Sadao. They know it very well. They know their limitations. They know their uh, position. They, they know their capacity. But they have a way to react. They have a way to express their, uh, what can you say? opposition, uh, their disagreement with Dr. Sadao and this is one of the finest ways of expressing their displeasure or disagreement with what Dr. Sadao is doing. So finally, all the servants of Dr. Sadao leave their jobs and the doctor couple are left alone. Read this part again not very important for me, but of course one question can come from here. Then what happens when after servant's, depart, servant's departure, Hana questions Sadao's being different from different from other Japanese. The white man expresses his gratitude to the doctor. Now, servants have left. Dr. Sadao and his wife are alone at their house. And now after servants have left, Hana introspects. Hana begins pondering, thinking about their own activities, about her husband's saving the American soldier. The same wife who had been standing rock solid with her husband is now raising a finger of doubt against his activities and is asking, let us read this paragraph. 
She made the breakfast and Sadao helped with the children. Neither of them spoke of the servants beyond the fact that they were gone. But after Hana had taken morning food to the prisoner, she came back to Sadao. And then <coughs> she asked this question to her husband. Why is it we cannot see clearly what we ought to do? She asked him. Even the servants see more clearly than we do. Why are we different from other Japanese? So what does it what does she mean to say? Why are we different from other Japanese? Other Japanese, even including servants, are thinking for their country first. So why are you different? Salao did not answer. Now read this part of the story. Very interesting. And then I am moving on to this part. What happens next? There is a turn. There is a twist in the story. A messenger in official uniform comes to Dr. Sadao's door. And when Hana sees a police officer at their doorstep, she is frightened. So who is this messenger in official uniform? And why has he come for? Has he come to arrest him? Again, in order to answer this question, read this part. My question is, who is this messenger in official uniform? And why has he come to Dr. Sadao's house? Why is Dr. Hana afraid of him? What she thinks him to be? If you can answer this question, the entire part will be in your mind. And answer is here. See, now moving on to this part. So here, if you remember the opening part of the story, where one general was under his treatment. So Dr. Sadao is being called by this old general because he is suffering and he has sent for Dr. Sadao. So now, Sadao goes to see the general. This is an important part of this story. So, read it carefully. But I tell you what is going to happen in the story. So far as Dr. Sadao is concerned, I give you the summary and you read it. And what possible questions can come from this part of the story that will also be you know, shared. I am going to tell you what possible questions can come from this part of the story. So when this man in uniform comes to Dr. Sadao, he gives information that so far as the old general is concerned, he is suffering and has sent for him. Dr. Sadao goes to the general and on meeting him, he narrates the entire episode, you can say entire story of this American prisoner. Then so far as the old general is concerned, he promises of, he promises Dr. Sadao of getting rid of him. The general tells Dr. Sadao that he would be sending his assassins. Assassins are the people who kill people. So this old general has his personal assassins. So he says that his killers, his murderers would be sent to Dr. Sadao's house and would kill him this American soldier silently and even dispose his body off so that the blame may not go on Dr. Sadao's head. But the question is, you have to find out answer to this question. Does the general send his personal assassins to Dr. Sadao's house? Is the American soldier killed? If not, why? If a question has to come from this part of the story, it will be this. And you read and I take you to the other part of the story. Now here, I have already told you, the general promises Dr. Sadao to help him, to help him get rid of the white man. 
So answer to the question that I had asked earlier can be found from here. You pause it, choose the keywords and then write down your answers. And I am taking you to the next part here. So by reading this heading you can understand that so far as the old general is concerned he doesn't keep his promise of sending the assassins and then Dr. Sadao has to think what he should do with this American soldier who has been harbored in his house for such a long time. Finally, he thinks of sending him safely. How? So this question can come, how did Dr. Sadao help the American soldier in escaping from Japan. Now again a question can come. Was Dr. Sadao right in helping this American soldier escape? Wasn't it possible that the same American soldier can turn against his country? And what does the author want to convey through this message? Instead of handing him over to the police, why did Dr. Sadao help him escape? Answer these questions from this part. And as I said, questions in your exam will be surrounding from these questions that I am asking. Moving ahead. So here we are. Dr. Sadao meets the general and informs him about the white man's escape. Now, look on the screen and let us see what is written and how it connects with the previous scene. So the sentences in the bold read, standing on the veranda, looking out to the sea, Dr. Sadao reasons with himself why he couldn't kill the white man. Hmm. So from this heading itself, you must have understood that Dr. Sadao has helped the American soldier to escape. But after he has gone, after he has left or after he has escaped, then he is thinking. Standing on his veranda, he is thinking. Why he couldn't kill that white man? This question is very very important. Let us read this part. So he stood for a moment on the veranda, gazing out to the sea from whence the young man had come that other night. And into his mind, although without reason, there came the other white faces he had known. The professor at whose house he had met Hana, a dull man, and his wife had been a silly talkative woman, in spite of her wish to be kind. He remembered his old teacher of anatomy who had been so insistent on mercy with the knife. And then he remembered the face of his fat and slatternly landlady. He had had great difficulty in finding a place to live in America because he was a Japanese. The Americans were full of prejudice and it had been bitter to live in it knowing himself their superior. How he had despised, despised means hated, how he had despised the ignorant and dirty old women who had at last consented to house him in her miserable home. He had once tried to be grateful to her because she had in his last year nursed him through influenza. But it was difficult for her. She was no less repulsive to him in her kindness. Now he remembered the youthful, haggard face of his prisoner, white and repulsive, very, very important part. Strange, he thought. I wonder why I couldn't kill him. So this takes you back. This takes him in America, where he had to face a similar situation. These last two, three lines tell us 
that when he was suffering from influenza, the American lady, the American woman, who despite not liking him, had nursed him. So if she hadn't nursed him, if she hadn't taken care of him, was it possible that he too might have met the same fate? And it was a kind of return of kindness because he had received kindness from the Americans. So he paid in the same uh, term, in the same, uh, uh, what you would say, reciprocation. So because he had been treated kindly, so he treated the American. So it shows exchange of humanity from both sides. Hope you must have understood the story and if there is any doubt left, let us run the story from start to the end in two minutes so that you can understand how it is developing and as I have been suggesting, wherever you feel that you lack a little understanding, you pause the video over there, read it once to uh, once or twice and you will find that you are developing the concept of this story in a very short period of time because uh, if you read it, it will take 4-5 hours but if you go along with the video lectures, it will save your time and at the same time will develop your understanding also. So, after we have completed it, let us move on to the summary part. Now, here is a summary of this story in front of you. But before I begin discussion of this summary, I would like to suggest you something. What suggestion I would like to give you is to make a collection of all the headlines that I have given in this story during the discussion and keep all those points on a notebook. Memorize all those points and you will find that if you memorize all those headings, they make your understanding of this long story very easier, very simpler and you can develop each heading by using some keywords. If you do that, it will help you write any answer related to this chapter. So that is one way. Second, the present summary that I am going to provide you contains some very important keywords. I will be uh, discussing those keywords and I will ask, uh, I will be asking you to keep those keywords and use those keywords while writing your answers. So with uh, this suggestion, this piece of advice, let us move on to the discussion of the summary part and I do believe that you are not having any problem in understanding this story. Because so far as uh, video lectures are concerned, they provide you a lot of hints, a lot of understanding but so far as working is concerned, it depends on you. If you want to work, you will be working on them. If you do not want to, you may not be working. Choice is yours but I would advise you to work because it saves a lot of your time and whenever you want to pick up the key phrases, key points from the story or from the summary, you can easily do it and you can perfect your answers. Look at the screen and uh, let us see what important keywords have been used in the summary part. So, The Enemy is a short story by Pearl S. Buck. Obviously, you will say if this is a short story, then what will be a long story? Okay, but a short story is a short story. The Enemy is a short story by Pearl S. Buck that delves into the complexities of war. This phrase has to be memorized delves into the complexities of war, discusses, explores how complex the wars are and human compassion. Sit this line, this phrase particularly, delves into the complexities of war and human compassion must be memorized by you. 
because when you write such kind of phrases in your answers the evaluators get attracted because such kind of phrases make your answers look special now second line set in japan during the world war ii the narrative narrative means story the narrative revolves around dr sadao hoki we have seen in the story a japanese physician who finds himself in a moral quandary this phrase is again very important dr sadao finds himself in a moral quandary what do you mean by this phrase in a moral dilemma quandary means dilemma so he finds himself in a dilemma so if you are using the word a moral quandary in your examination again it will set out uh, it will set you out to be a different kind of student so such kind of phrases make you look a better student when he discovers an injured american soldier washed ashore near his home so these two phrases from this paragraph should be memorized by heart and how they are used dr sadao's dr hokis internal conflict arises from the fact that the soldier is an enemy combatant and aiding him could be seen as an act of treason yes this is very very important line you must memorize it i explain it in still further simpler language so dr sadao hokis conflict his dilemma is arises from the fact from this fact that if he is helping an american soldier who is his enemy aiding him could be seen as an act of treason treason is a crime against your country so he is helping the american soldier will be seen as an act of his own country this is clear i think however despite knowing this fact dr hokis commitment to the hippocratic oath means here hippocratic oath means that this nationalism is not greater than humanitarian faith and his innate sense of humanity compel him to provide medical care to the wounded american soldier regardless of his nationality so he rises above all barriers all faiths and shows that the greatest faith is a faith of humanity the greatest philosophy is a philosophy of tending man healing man so he rises all the prejudices he rises above all the barriers if you can manage to write such kind of phrases in your answers nobody can stop you from scoring 100% marks Dr. Sadao Hoki. Dr. Hoki hides the soldier in a hidden chamber within his house, and with the help of his wife Hana, nurses the American back to health. We have seen in the story. Now, as the soldier recovers, tensions rise within the Hoki household. We have seen servants leaving the house, Hana raising questions whether they are doing right thing or wrong thing. they face the constant threat of discovery by japanese authorities who would surely punish them severely for aiding the enemy so there is a constant fear that if they are found out then treason will be the only charge that will be slapped on them and they will be condemned to death despite these challenges a bond forms between american soldier so whether you understand or not a bond is being formed between sadao and that american only they need is help him escape they come to see him as a person rather than an enemy and he in turn expresses his gratitude and respect memorize each and every line of the summary the climax of the story occurs when the soldier's health is restored and he must leave the sanctuary of the hoki household Dr Sadao Dr Hoki decides to help the American soldier escape by providing him with a boat and directions to safety His decision is a poignant demonstration of the universality of human compassion and the futility of war So this act of helping the American soldier escape 
is a show of universal human compassion. This is how others should also do. So it's a kind of a strong message. It underscores, underscores means uh, emphasizes, highlights the idea that individuals, regardless of their nationalities, share a common humanity that transcends the divisions created by conflict. Last paragraph of this summary. In the enemy, Pearl S. Buck offers a powerful commentary on the absurdity of war. In simple language, she shows that war is absurd, useless, and the ability of compassion to bridge the gaps between enemies. The story serves as a reminder that even in the most dire circumstances, empathy and humanity can prevail. Again, this is very, very important line. So what author this uh, Pearl S. Buck is trying to send out as a message is that under all circumstances, sympathy, empathy, humanity, compassion, mercy rises above all, can prevail, challenging the dehumanization of the enemy and promoting the notion that people are more alike than different when striped of the levels of war. So, this is a very, very important summary break it down in your own words and it will be sufficient for you to score 100% marks in any question. So it's all in this chapter. Hope you must have understood.